Okay, Alice. Show me how to pray. All right. Let's get on our knees. Why do we get on our knees? Is the reception better on our knees than on our feet? No. But getting on our knees reminds us that we need to bow before God. He is, after all, our creator and the king of kings and the lord of lords. Wow, that makes him sound pretty important. Very important. Are you sure it's okay we talk to him? I mean, it's not like I can just call up the president or, you know, the girl who played Captain Marvel. I assure you it's okay. Okay, how do we start? Well, we start the prayer by calling his name. Do you want to give it a try? Me? I guess I can try. Go for it. O oh, King of Kings, O oh, Mighty Lord of Lords, O oh, Great and Powerful One who created the mountains and rivers and the otters and polar bears. Lily? Hear the voice of me, Lily Patterson, and my friend Alice Riley, who says it's totally okay we do this even though I'm still not so sure. Lily? You are the Grand Pooba, the Big Kahuna, the Big Cheese, the Head Honcho. Lily? Do you think he heard me? I'm sure he did, but you don't have to be that formal. But you said he's a big deal. I mean, he did create the mountains and the polar bears, right? Yes, he did. He also sent his son Jesus to save us from sin, and he's making a beautiful home for us in heaven. So he is the big kahuna. Absolutely, but he kind of prefers father. Father? Just plain father? Just plain father. He doesn't want us to be afraid to speak to him like we speak to our own parents. That's why Jesus began his prayer with, Our Father, who lives in heaven, holy is your name. That's a lot simpler. I feel less silly saying that than Big Cheese and Head Honcho. The amazing thing about God is that he cares enough to listen to our individual prayers. Yes, he is the almighty God, but he's also our father and he loves us and always has time for us. OK, let me try this again. Hey God, it's me Lily. I know you're super great and the big kahuna and all, but Alice says I can call you father. Is that OK? Is that OK? <laughs> Lily, you're off to a great start. Hi guys, welcome to part two of a six part series teaching us to pray Jesus's way. Let's pray to open. Dear God, thank you for listening anytime we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Now, how many of you will walk into the classroom tomorrow, pass by your teacher's desk and address them by their first name? Anyone? Let's say your teacher is named John Smith. Would any of you have the guts to walk into class and say, hey, Johnny, how was your weekend? Did you have fun grading all those tests? John boy, I'm not surprised I don't see any hands on this. We're taught from day one in school how to address our teachers. Teachers are adults and they have a role of authority over us. We would never call John Smith our uh, year three teacher by his first name. And we sure wouldn't call him John Boy. His name is Mr. Smith and we best not forget it. There are many people in our lives we address with formal titles. If you went to the office of Joseph Donaldson to get your teeth cleaned, you wouldn't hop in the seat and say, hello, Joe, what do you know? You'd call him by his proper title, Dr. Donaldson. The man went to dental school to earn that title and it's respectful to address him as doctor when you pay him a visit. Your basketball coach, Adeline Johnson, would not have gone to school for coaching. She may just be a volunteer, but you wouldn't call her Addie. You would address her in the way she wants to be addressed as Coach Addie or Coach Adeline or Coach Johnson. We're used to addressing important people by important titles, whether it's Mr, Miss, Doctor, Coach, or even Pastor, Reverend. 
If the Queen of England walked in, we'd address her as Your Royal Highness. And if the President walked in, we would call him Mr. President. So what are we to do when we get on our knees and pray to the Lord? How do we address the man Isaiah met in a vision written about in his book? Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8 says, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a very high throne. His long robe filled the temple. Burning heavenly creatures stood above him. Each creature had six wings. They used two wings to cover their faces. They used two wings to cover their feet. And they used two wings for flying. Each creature was calling to the others. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. His glory fills the whole earth. Their voices caused the frame around the door to shake. The temple filled with smoke. I said, oh no, I will be destroyed. I'm not pure. And I live among people who are not pure. But I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. On the altar, there was a fire. One of the burning heavenly creatures used a pair of tongs to take a hot coal from the fire. Then he flew to me with the hot coal in his hand. The creature touched my mouth with the hot coal. Then he said, look. Your guilt is taken away because this hot coal has touched your lips. Your sin is taken away. Then I heard the Lord's voice. He said, whom can I send? Who will go for us? So I said, here I am. Send me. Isaiah saw the Lord in all his glory. He fell on his face and worshipped God. He was afraid. Yet Isaiah had the privilege of speaking directly to the Lord and receiving a call to serve God. Isaiah's vision left no doubt God is almighty and powerful, but it also shows us something amazing. Unlike the kings and queens and presidents of our world, God is approachable. Jesus gave us a name we can use to address this almighty, all-powerful God. It's how we begin the Lord's Prayer, and it's how we can begin every prayer. It's a name God wants us to use, so we are not afraid to speak with him. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God wants to be our heavenly father. He wants us to come and speak to him like we would a loving parent. Why? Because he loves us. God is all powerful and he is almighty, but he loves us individually. He wants to have a relationship with us and it's his pleasure to listen whenever we pray. Why does it matter that we call God our father and not your majesty? Because the way we address people sets the tone for how we speak with them. We speak very differently with our families than we do our teachers. We are much more formal, more grown up in the way we speak to people we address as Mr and Mrs compared to the people we address as mum and dad. The names we use for people determine how we speak to them. Let's go back to our dentist for a moment. If you were at the office of Dr Joseph Donaldson, you certainly wouldn't speak to him like you would your friends. You'd call him Dr Donaldson. If he asked you questions, you'd answer them with, yes, sir, and no, sir, and be on your best behaviour. But what if Dr. Joseph Donison was more than just a dentist? What if he was also your grandpa? Would you be so afraid to speak to him? Would you joke around with him? You'd probably smile a whole lot more, even when he had you in the examination chair. Yes, Dr. Joseph Donison is a dentist. Yes, he has medical degrees and a very serious job to do. But he's also someone you know and trust, someone who loves you deeply. God is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is our creator. He is the one person who can save us from our sins. And yet he wants to be our father. He wants us to know that he's never too busy to listen. He wants us to come to him and not be afraid to speak what is on our minds. How amazing is it that God of heaven wants us to talk to him? When we pray, we can address him as father. We can be confident that he loves us and will listen to every word we say. We have a holy and loving God. And even though he holds the whole universe in his hands, he wants us to address him simply as father. Dear God, thank you for the awesome love you've shown us. In Jesus' name. Amen.